couple days away from Cincinnati, and you know, we can start having some fun here, right? Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot at Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football or hockey. I also offer Daily Shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Pirates versus Reds, Thursday at 4.10 p.m. inside Great American Ballpark. I'm actually leaving for Cincinnati tomorrow because the Pirates will have a noon workout on that field. That'll run about two hours. I'll be able to gather all kinds of last-minute insight from the athletes and the coaches and Derek Shelton and everything else that I'll be able to share with you on the morning of the opener. I'm looking forward to all of this, but I'm going to be honest. I'm not looking forward to any of it more than I am the distribution of the very first lineup. I'm sorry. I just love it. I love being able to look at that very first list, even if it's aimed at uh, things other than prestige. Although all managers are aware that, uh, a significant player, a veteran player, someone that you really respect, will expect, and rightly so, to be in that lineup regardless of game circumstances. You will also see occasionally a left-right matchup or someone who just happens to hit that day's opponent well put onto the card. But for me, the other thing that happens is that you get a first real feel for what that season is going to be like, because it's very different than seeing it, hearing it, or reading it in Bradenton. It just is. So on that note, we're going to give this a shot today. Forget about the pitchers. Forget about everybody else. We're going to talk about what this lineup in all likelihood will look like. Shelton, of course, won't talk about it in advance. Never does. But he's Got a habit, as most managers do, that once you get into the final week and change of Grapefruit League Ball, he'll start showing you what it's going to be. So let's look at the one that the Pirates used yesterday in their 8-4 to loss to the Twins down in Fort Myers, Florida. It had O'Neill Cruz leading off, and I know this is going to be something that's going to be a point of contention for as long as it lasts. Because he's going to hit 30 home runs. He might hit 30 home runs by accident. He might hit 30 home runs even if he's terrible. (laughs) Only with Cruz could you say such a thing and have it make sense. But he might be that guy. And every single time that he does, and he'll touch all those bags without anybody in front of him because Austin Hedges will have been the nine hitter or he'll have done it to open the game. There's going to be a, what are we doing with this guy? Why is he there? I'm going to answer that. And it might not be to your satisfaction, but I know for a fact that this is how the pirates feel about it. He's comfortable there and he's productive there. And if there's one thing that matters more than the team's run production for the offense, long-term and short-term, it's that Cruz breaks out. If he breaks out, you'll answer a whole lot of questions about this franchise moving forward. So that's where he's going to be. It might not last long. Those of you who go way back will remember that Barry Bonds was a leadoff hitter. Well, Jim Leland wasn't an idiot either, and Leland wasn't going to have him be a leadoff guy into perpetuity. But Bonds liked it. Bonds was comfortable there. He saw himself, and rightly so, as a 30-30 guy, someone who was going to steal as much as he hit the ball out. He was comfortable there. Once things got a little bit more normalized, Bonds was dropped into the heart of the order. Brian Reynolds is batting second. If I have to explain to anybody in the year 2023 why... All of the advanced analytics show that you should have your best hitter at number two. All I really should have to do is to point to the other team on this day because it was Joey Votto and the Reds who really, I don't want to say pioneered it, but they were the ones who took their best hitter and just said, you know what? He's hitting second. He's hitting second. Why? Here's why. Here's all the math, all the data to show why you should have your most productive hitter there. 
That's why Reynolds is there. Nothing else to discuss. Andrew McCutcheon batted third yesterday. We'll see. We'll see. Kutch from a few years ago owned the number three spot, and he should have. We'll see if this is just a measure of respect or whether it's the Pirates not really having a true three or if you're waiting for Kibrian Hayes to be the three. Uh, We'll see how that one plays out. I'm going to step back from that and just kind of let it stand on its own. The cleanup hitter is Carlos Santana. That one you can pretty much take to the bank. It's going to be Santana or it's going to be G-Man Choi. Uh, Choi doesn't have the power that Santana does, but they have other fairly somewhat similar traits, and they both have the veteranosity to be able to handle the cleanup spot without having it overwhelm them. Yesterday's lineup had Jack Sawinski at fifth. I would not go very far with that. I don't think you're going to see that. But I do think you're going to see, and this is something that we witnessed many, many times over the course of 2022, Sawinski be your seven guy, uh, even an eight, but most likely your seven guy. If all he does is hit home runs, you're going to be okay with him in that spot because his home runs will theoretically count for something. Bringing you back to Cruz again. He's different. Number six was Kibrian Hayes. And this one's tough because Key has had a really uplifting spring from the pop standpoint. Uh, more than half of his hits have gone for extra bases. Four of them have been home runs. He He's really shown you more of the flashes that you haven't seen since probably the pandemic month in 2020, where he was not only smoking the ball, he's done that pretty much consistently in his time in the majors, but he's not putting it on the ground. You know, he's getting it up where it can do some damage. In that event, Key really ought to be your number three hitter, and maybe he will be in Cincinnati. Maybe he will be. We'll see about that. And if that happens, before I go any further with this, then Kutch would be your five. And again, Kutch has to be productive at a level that he hasn't really been since he left Philadelphia. His his Milwaukee tenure was was pretty good, but it's not something that most teams would slot in at five. But I think for now, your best case scenario is to have Kutch at five and Key at three, but we'll see how that plays out. Uh, beyond that, for the bottom three of the order, I mentioned Sawinski. Uh, there's Kanan Smith and the Jigba. I, I know you can't play four outfielders, but I'm throwing him into a, a general pot of uh, Rodolfo Castro, Jihuan Bay. Um, if Smith and Ajigba is in the lineup, he might be an eight, meaning if he's in there instead of Sawinski and you might slide up a Castro, you might slide up a Bay. I can't say this often enough, and I'm going to seize the opportunity again. I hope Bay makes this team. I'd love to see the Pirates make at least one special step toward capitalizing on these new rules. And Bay is by far best equipped to do that. And number nine is going to be Austin Hedges, unless Shelton is in a really weird mood. So what do you think? What do you think? I don't know. I'm going to wait until I can actually see it, see them pass the sheet out in the press box at Great American Ballpark. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Today's J1Q comes from Phil, who asks, Do the Pirates need to find a lefty relief pitcher other than the Rule 5 guy? He says before the start of the season, or is handedness 
overemphasized. Just roll with the best pitchers available for the pen. You say other than the Rule 5 guy, Phil, and there isn't anyone that you'd want in that role other than Harlan Garcia, who, of course, was hurt. He was expected to be that guy. And Jose Hernandez, who is the Rule 5 guy, I saw him pitch in Grapefruit Ball this year, and I came away uh, almost frightened because press boxes in spring training are right behind home plate, and he had no idea where some of these balls were going. And if you go back over Hernandez's time in the minor leagues, and let's remember that he's never been in the majors, uh, you'll see that he has a walk for every two innings pitched. That is not a rate that you can carry into the majors as a 25-year-old who's probably already what he's going to be. I get very much why the Pirates selected him. I can respect wanting an arm like that uh, under your watch for a full spring training. You give him an opportunity to maybe straighten things out. You give the pitching coach and the pitching staff a chance to work with him, maybe stabilize him. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. I would be disappointed if he makes the roster. I'll, I'll take it that far. As for a lefty on the pen, you say the emphasis on handedness. I, I don't know that if it's the emphasis on handedness that changed past tense as much as the rule itself that when you come into the game, you got to stay in for the full inning. The days of the Damaso Marte type uh, are gone. The the loogie is what the the stats heads would call it. Somebody the left the lefty one out guy I think is what loogie stood for, if I remember correctly. Uh, those guys are history. Uh, they were fun while they lasted. Uh, Marte himself would put up these ridiculous numbers. Like it would be like eighty three appearances on the season, and he had like seventy two strikeouts or whatever. I'm making this up, but why? Because he would come in face one hitter on a left-left matchup that was just a brutal, brutal mismatch for the whoever was in the box. He'd be completely fresh, and he'd come with these, in addition to a devastating fastball, a wipeout slider that would end up in the dirt, but the hitter had no chance at it. Um, that doesn't exist anymore. If you're a manager now, and, and Shelton is one of these people, and I know that he, both he and Don Kelly believe very much in this, you would like to be able to enter certain clean innings with a lefty. There's certain opponents that'll stack them a certain way, or maybe they'll have had their lineup set that way because of whoever it was that you had starting. And it's a nice luxury to have, but I believe it's a luxury, and I believe that the Pirates are far better equipped to take a bunch of their best righties uh, north and then see how things go with Garcia and if it doesn't work out well, man, there's lefties all over the waiver wire all the time. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. One more of these tomorrow before the real thing. 